Warning. This video may contain negativity coming from the reality of building multiple streams of income. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is V. I am an actuary and I have a very rewarding uh, corporate career uh, working in a top life insurance company in uh, Canada. Um, but I also had a lot of experiences uh, building, uh, having a um, side business, side hustle, uh, as well as trying to build multiple stream of income. So I want to share with you today the reality of uh, building multiple streams of income. Is it really easy? Like people say, uh, the spoiling alert is uh, no, this is the fail version of me trying to do different things. And hopefully from that, you will have a lot of key takeaway and uh, lesson learned. Yeah, so stay tuned for the actual numbers, the actual uh, story and uh, on the lesson and takeaway before you're actually getting started with your uh, side business or if you're interested in having something on the side. I also want to make this video uh, technically is a fail version of building multiple stream of income because I want to get it out of the way as soon as possible before the Lunar New Year kicking in. And uh, if you are uh, living in Canada or US uh, or France and you want to save money back home in Vietnam or the Philippines, the Thailand or Sri Lanka, uh, I have a promotion for you and uh, it's actually my first partnership with the company same wave. So you can send as little as $1 and this promotion would give you $30 free credit for the receiver for your first trade bar. So if you want to send money back home, uh, especially for the Lunar New Year, make sure to take advantage of this promotion. So besides having a corporate job, I actually started a photography business with my husband. So the reason was that um, I guess one of the reasons was uh, I will finish all of my exams already, all my actual exam, even my CFA exam, and uh, I started my MBA as well halfway through. To be honest, I got uh, we got married, and um, my husband has always been into photography. I was just thinking. Um, Maybe we can do something like this because if, if that is passion and I'm, I'm always interested in photography as well, although not as much as him in terms of the technical aspect because like, I usually I will be using the model and he's the, the photographer, right? So just from that, uh, I just thought, okay, let's just try it. Let's start it. Uh, because I was doing my MBA and uh, my, my MBA program is a lot about entrepreneurship, about business. And, uh, and yeah, uh, I just, I just thought about it and he, he seemed to be interested in it and I just did it. We just uh, created, um, the website and I, I got into learning about like the whole business aspect of a photography business. Like there is so much more that you need to know of besides just having a camera and then take pictures or editing it. Like, Every business, if you want to be successful, you need to know the business aspect of it. So I can go on and on and on uh, about uh, how to start a business and everything in detail. But today we are talking about a number of my, the fail version of building multiple stream of income. So I will just tell you the number right away uh, so that you have an idea of how it really is. So we officially started in 2017 and that was our first year to actually getting our own uh, clients uh, and everything under the brain and not just like working uh, freelance for other people anymore. So uh, so 2017, 2018, I would say like uh, we we're just getting started building uh, our portfolio and everything. So I would say 2019 is when like we, we, we were busy. Let me tell you the actual number that we made in 2019. In terms of revenue, we made $41,120. Pretty good, right? If you think about it as our part time, um, and roughly we probably spend like in total, both of us, uh, a thousand hours. Uh, when you think about it, so after that's now 40, over 40K, so like $40 per hour, not that, right? But, you need to know the expense to come with it. A lot of people don't tell you the expense. So the expense 
uh, that we're reporting uh, for the year was $45,448. When you look at that in our expenses, so the biggest chunk is in marketing. For the wedding industry, if you have a bridal shop uh, in London area, like a few thousand dollars. In Toronto, even way much more, like can be four or five thousand dollars for a booth. And not only that, you need to have the brochure, the flyers, distribution. So we spend a lot of money, like 27% of that, uh, going into marketing, right? Promotions, both in person, uh, in those bridal shows, as well as like with the different magazine, the website, everything. And then we have like, uh, ten percent in vehicle because like you need to travel for engagement show, talking to clients. So it's like uh, and then we we work both in we serving like uh couples from both in London area as well as like Toronto, southwestern Ontario, like everywhere uh in between. So a lot in like ten percent is like vehicle spaces, and then you have like uh also uh the utilities insurance business you definitely want to have an insurance in this in case like uh your equipment is lost or like if there's like a liability insurance if you take pictures at some venue they do require you to have insurance so for sure you if you operate a legit business you want to register for them and then i mentioned like uh there's like um subscription so this is like subscription part of a different um uh photography main uh, photography organization so we're part of uh, fearless photographers um as well as like wppi back then um so then we have so that's like around 5.5 percent then we have capital cost uh, allowance so this is like uh related to our equipment you cannot just like expense everything like less than a thousand dollars yes like buying flashes and stuff you can expense this right away because like those every year we literally get a new flash um a new flash or like some sd card and stuff just for backup and everything so the capital cost allowance is like depreciate like uh showing depreciation for our equipment like we spend over twenty thousand dollars at first and now like even more because like our um our computer computers that we build for the software is over five thousand dollars just for example so there's a capital cost allowance is like 10 percent uh, for the year and then we started getting into a uh, newborn photography as well and then uh, wanting to like build up like studio props um or like having uh getting into like the portrait to, to build a studio at home for this so that's like uh nine percent on that and then we continue to invest into like upgrade our skills and stuff because really that's that's what my husband loves is like about taking pictures create beautiful art uh and images for the clients so like Courses was like around 4.6 percent. So uh, and then of course there are others uh, courses related to uh, the office, the Spain, the material, and then like the cost of goods sold here is talking about more like because we do albums, uh, prints for the clients, so they're actually like we paying the lab for for uh, these expenses and stuff. So. It is a lot of money. Like maybe our expenses were a little bit on high side than uh, uh, for uh, for just some starting uh, um, for starting because like we really want getting into like the whole uh, automated processes as well as continue to invest in the business because we were hoping that like um, after that our um, our revenue will be able to increase further because like we now is, is a different level of uh, service and everything. So probably hopefully it was like, um, more like one time investment, uh, for certain things, uh, so that like in the later years, the space will be a little bit less and then your revenue would grow, but then COVID hit. So, and because of COVID, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it, it can be very frustrating and, and we are fortunate to still having a full time job and we still, we were able to work from home with our like full time job. But many, many vendors in the wedding industry, they, they were struggling because now like their main income, uh, pretty much is like, be taken away because of the COVID. So lots of wedding were canceled, was rescheduled. I had to say like it was pretty demotivating, uh, for me because like, uh, Dealing with all of that is it's not it's it's not fun, right? 
So I was at, like, I, I stepped back a lot from the business side of the photography. Um, and yeah, so like 2020 or 2021, I really want to show you the space uh, on, on like the revenue because yeah, it, it just, it just tank. Uh, but yeah, so like from 2019 pre COVID, you can see my net loss was around, uh, um, $4,328. Um, it's, it's, it's not great. And because like, uh, we put a lot of effort into it, but we, we were hoping that it would, like, it would grow into, uh, like a, a better direction in the future to like better revenue and then like less expenses and stuff. And it were trending like that. But yeah, it's just because of COVID, um, everything just like kind of change. Yeah. And so, so yeah. So anyways, right now we're still doing our photography business and I would say we cut back a lot of the expenses, especially the marketing, everything. Like we are in a more like much more passive side uh, of that. Like we not, we not hire people to do SEO for us anymore. Uh, we're not revamping the website anymore. So certain things like, uh, we, yeah, we just start, uh, paying for certain subscription and everything. So we, we keep it more on the minimum side because like we're not as active. But we still love the aspect, so love the taking the pictures, love like documenting our love story of the couples and the family and the portrait. But we, I, I guess we're getting to more, uh, a little bit more on the portrait side. But yeah, uh, we keep it going because I think the satisfaction that we get from it is still, for personal satisfaction, is still a great thing. Uh, so, but hopefully <laughs> it will be, it will be a little bit, um, profitable and making minimum wage at least for both of us even though it's a smaller scale so i would say pre-covid my uh my personal rating for this experience uh probably gonna be like uh maybe four four point five stars but then because of the whole COVID and stuff then uh and then right now we still like in a way unprofitable right because of just the whole thing that i would say is like probably 3.5 uh, star rating on this because like my lesson is like what I learned from running a business is uh, tremendous. I actually use my experiences that I gained from learning the whole business side. Uh, I actually like talk about it uh, when I had interviews for different board in my company as well because like dealing with clients, um, like the whole marketing the whole social media or like uh, just uh, serving like customer centric mindset is is it, like very valuable experiences like we learn a lot from it. the communications like we're comfortable talking to different people and everything like it's, it's very valuable so so i would say from that like this is this is great even though it's not profitable uh we learn a lot from this but yeah um but if people like if you read story that like Oh yeah, uh, someone just like uh, taking pictures and then charge like thousands of dollars and then can, can make people, uh, make money on the side easily. Uh, sure, maybe a few, yes, there are people successfully making this, their full time and people that successfully, okay, but to start a business is, there's a lot of things that you need to do and the effort, the skill, uh, and if you're actually passionate about that and you want to produce great pictures, you want to have your clients having the best and stuff, it's, it's a lot to do with the business aspect of it. And it's, it's not an easy thing. So, and another unfortunate thing about photography business is like, uh, the digital world, uh, like with the cell phone pictures of people just think, Oh, I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer. It's, it's not like that. It's not the same. The main thing is like in, in the best situation, um, when everything happened good, then sure, you can, you can produce, uh, an average okay quality picture, but, uh, the professional, uh, photographer is there like in any situation, like even though it's a crappy situation and stuff, we will be able to produce like high quality, consistent images, uh, document everything that actually happened. The wedding day only happened once, like, like even for equipment, we have two SD cards, we have multiple different backup and stuff, uh, so that like if, if the, pictures are lost or anything, uh, we have different things multiple have. And it does happen that there's the equipment failure or something stuff. So we have backup camera. We we have like in total like three different bodies and seven different lenses, many flashes, many different software and stuff to back up all of these. Right? This is just to ensure that uh 
we know like you're gonna get quality uh, pictures that actually document your wedding day, the day how it actually is, so that you can remember about like your day and uh, relieve uh, uh, all of these moments and, and, and stuff. But yeah, anyways, so that is my story for the photography business. And if you want to listen more about this, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And I definitely can share more about like, the detailed tips and lesson learned and uh, how I would have done it differently if I can get started now. Okay, so now fast forward to uh, 20, uh, 2020 uh, when, uh, because of the COVID, um, our photography business kind of like, get jeopardized uh, with the different instruction, I got really demotivating. Uh, and then I guess I feel bored too, because like uh, I we have always been very busy with the photography business. And then like, uh, even though I still have my, my full time job, I still have my study and everything. But for me, like, I guess I'm always, I always like naturally look out for different things to experience and experiment. Uh, so one day I was, I was just looking up on well, the different ways to uh, make money all the time and stuff and I guess it's also for to like uh, the following the trend of uh, financial freedom and early retirement although I love again I love my uh, corporate job uh, but it's like my husband is really will be the time that like uh, going for uh, early retirement and everything so so and as long as that idea that I have in the house, in the family, I will be the one that try to execute it. Even though I may not be retire, retiring early, but if that helps him to retire early so that like he can do what he loves more and everything, I don't see why not. And so, so I will be the time of starting taking actions. So yeah, so one day I just look up on uh, what can you do? Uh, to make money online or like building passive income and stuff. Uh, so yeah, so like the first one when I was looking up is like uh, doing survey and research. Um, and I should have known better. <laughs> I should have known better. Um, you probably did wondering like why I did that thing. But yeah, I did actually try to do survey online and I actually spent like 20 to 30 hours for that is because I already started doing it and the platform for them is like they're building things like that like oh if you're doing these activities you watch the tier if you're watching maybe an, an ad or or you sign up for this or you're filling out this survey you get points and uh, <laughs> it can get addicting so so I just kept getting into that rabbit hole of like so I need to uh, reach that first level payout. You know what the first level payout is? Five USD, five USD. <laughs> so, but then I was so determined and I was like, I want to get to that level. And I just did not stop. I'm pretty sure I spent it, I spent more than like 20 or 30 hours of answering survey and doing these things just to get that $5 USD of payout. Actually got that. But you know what also other thing happened is that like uh I tried I think I tried three different platforms. So I only got the five dollar payout from Survey Junkie. Uh the other one is Webbox and there's also Univox. I'm pretty sure Univox is like a spam website. And now after that I still got now everyday spam emails, like new spam email that I cannot just like yeah, I click junk every time, but I still get spam email every day, like at least twice per day. So the risk of this is can be medium to high because like you can get into this spam and the reward is super, super low. Like 20, 30 hours of just getting like $5 USD. I'm probably not the best person uh, filling out survey, maybe. And because like a lot of different surveys that like you just get started and then after you spend like five, 10 minutes and they just stop because they say, oh, uh, they already accept enough survey uh, answers or that like, oh, you're not qualified for it after they, they're looking at your answer from the pre screening. So it's like you, you waste a lot of time trying a lot of different surveys. So even though like maybe they say there's some specialized one that you can get like more money um, for the survey, in reality, I would say it doesn't really happen uh, to be true. So, so yeah, my personal experience, given that I only make five USD and I spent so many hours on it, I got spent email. This is definitely zero, zero star rating for me.
yeah. But yeah, I should have known better. I should have known better. But yeah, I was just so single-minded and I just want to get to that one level. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. At least now I have the story to tell you. And yeah, but on the, on the other side, I actually got approached uh, by a university professor who was doing some uh, survey, uh, some, I guess, some research uh, paper for a university and they wanted to, uh, to get uh, people, uh, practitioner in the risk management professional filling out their survey and I did get $25 Amazon gift card for participate and answer um, and was able to, I guess, solve it in the right way and, uh, and start from this survey. So, so yeah, so if you get those opportunity when it's actually legitimate research from like academic uh from institution and and those kind of things then yeah like i don't see why not is it like it is uh, probably like took 20 minutes for me uh to uh feel out of it and i, I found it's pretty interesting and you get like 25 dollars so of course this thing is like um i don't think there's like i don't think there's a uh, any website for it it's like probably because i already have a presence on linkedin so so people approaching uh, approach me for that but if if you happen to be in uh in university i know back then in university i also did uh i spent like a few hours and i got like 20 25 dollar as well for one of the research uh, uh being like research participants so so they do have these kinds of opportunities so if you are still a student and you're looking uh, for just making small money and also like I found this research interesting uh, I think you can go for it but yeah. so my next one uh, looking at that list of potential uh, um, passive income stream is uh, selling stock photos and of course uh, because we already have photography business, we do have a lot of different uh, photos that um, while well, we're taking uh, during our traveling and stuff, so it's not really like our clients' portfolios. So, like that's the um, we respect uh, those portfolio and stuff, so we don't touch it. But it's like our own traveling pictures and stuff. So we just like, yeah, okay, I can do stock photos and everything. So it's I would say like the interface, the user interface of these uh, when you try to sell something is is not the best or not the uh, easiest or most user friendly so uh but i try to post uh, it through adobe stock and shutter stock so yeah so like you and i can see that like it's actually hard to making money just like as anything else uh because like technically if you i look at that tips if you want to make money serious by making money from that it's like first taking stock photos um you you first you want to be able to uh, have relevant content so for example during covid time then at the beginning maybe it's like about people wearing masks and stuff right so you need to be able to produce these things so research on that look up at different trains and then to produce like excellent pictures and stuff i would say not everyone um not everyone would be able to produce like high quality pictures or like it is actually not as passive as you as you think is quite active uh, as well in terms of like uh, doing your research plan, execute in uh, producing pictures and then like doing all of the tag, all of the keywords so that like, hopefully your, your stock photo is going to be shut up properly. Uh, yeah, just like anything else. So yeah, we, we try it. We didn't get anything, but yeah, I spent like maybe um, a few hours, half a day max on that and like, no. Uh, I didn't feel like uh, spending much more energy on this. So I guess if you're already into photography and then you're more like in terms of the documentary, you have a habit of like uh, documenting your daily life when you go out and taking pictures and everything, then yeah, maybe potentially it's like it, it can, that you can create some hobby, uh, some uh, ha passive income, but, but don't expect much. So my personal rating for this, uh, I guess just two star uh, is okay. Uh, after that, I actually look into one step further. It's like instead of selling the pictures through stock photo, uh, we wanted to sell it through Etsy, Etsy store. Uh, so what I didn't know is that you actually have to pay listing fee with your, on your Etsy, um, sales. And actually, like, there's like, when you put up a, a, a listing, there are a lot of things that you have to do behind the scene administratively to prepare for your listing. 
So again, there is always more work than you think it is because I, I took like a whole day to actually look up to see what kind of pictures, what kind of combinations, and then you, uh, because like I'm self, we, we were trying to sell digital photos, so we have to be able to like, um, be able to like uh, finding uh, stock image so that like it's, it's a showcase like all oh, what if you hang it on the wall or those type of things. So yeah, so there's a lot of administration work behind the scene. And uh, the, of course the competition is now on SN so it's very high, right? So so the what you get into is like uh, how can people search for your pictures if your pictures are not unique and stuff. So then they, they have all of those uh, marketing um that you can pay uh advertising fee that you can pay you know for your listing to show up earlier or they show up on the top and stuff uh so yeah so we 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 try it and then we just want to see and stick it out to see what it happened so i would say the advertising work the advertising with uh se work they have different choices uh because we eventually did get a few sales so but like when we do it for like, I guess actively uh, with the SSL, maybe like for three months, three to four months. So what it is like in total, um, we made $54 in revenue uh, and our expenses, including the listing fee and the advertising was a hundred bucks. So in total, of course we made the loss of $46 and that's like a period of, of like, um, 12 month period, but it's like maybe active with the uh, SE, with the advertising is like, uh, around four or five months. So like after that, I just, I just leave it here and pay a little bit listing fee, but yeah, uh, a few dollars per month. But yeah, um, with anything, advertising, marketing is always going to be the key for any of the, any of the business or any of the selling and stuff. And again, I just, I have many different things that I you know, started and tried to do. So it, it, it's just not something that I wanted to spend uh, the energy on. And again, like uh, earlier I say, I was uh, a little bit demotivating with the photography business and stuff because of the whole COVID and everything. So we're just like letting it this lie. I try it uh, just to see how it is. And, and yeah, then that's it. Okay, so now let's move on on what else I did after trying on these things. So another one on the list was uh, in the list of like uh, what you can do online uh, is uh, starting a blog. So I actually uh, dabbling into that, uh, starting a blog with uh, with my uh, one of my family members because like uh, she's also into art, into traveling and uh, sharing lifestyle tips and everything. So I already built a build a website before through the photography business so for me uh how to uh, how to build a blog or how to build a website is it's not a, a new thing for me so i'm okay with that but then when i get into the actual writing i guess i'm not a writer it took me forever and ever into writing something uh, nice maybe it's because i'm a mathy so uh it's hard for me to have a good story, a compelling story, uh, and, uh, and stuff. So I actually try to like, uh, maybe thinking of like do book summary and stuff. But then again, again, reading is one thing, but actually like putting it down into, um, an article and like a good article. It just, yeah, it's just not my thing. So <laughs> after spending like, uh, uh, two weeks and uh, trying to write article with my family member and everything. Um, I gave up on the idea. So, but if you are interested, if you are interested in writing and you have a lot of things that you want to share and you have like a particular niche topic. So, so I know that like, um, they say for blog is best is if you want to be, uh, if you want to have a niche. So very niche on like specifically like, um, uh, very knowing exactly who your target market is and just building around that. And, uh, and you can try first with some free website. Like, uh, like there's always like, um, I use Squarespace for my website because that's what I use for top photography business. But then like for, you can get free website with like uh, Google. But that one it doesn't have like great blog aspect, but then like another one is WordPress or like Wix and stuff. So, there can be different options. So anyways, uh, I would say just 
start writing in uh, documenting and journaling thing first to see like if you're interested in these and having something to uh it's more like your personal project first right and then maybe it gets something but if but like a lot of things they say is like yeah you can monetize your blog short you can monetize monetize it but it's actually to build to get to something and and to actually make money it it is a lot of effort in uh, work like like any other business so nothing is really as easy as it said so i would say like starting it as like more like a hobby first but like if you're actually serious about uh making into a business then then you should think uh more strategically at first okay now uh, we get to my i guess say my current passion project uh that is my youtube channel so again I was, I guess I was on the whole thing of trying out different ideas and everything. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, one day when, uh, my husband was not at home and like, and I guess like I just thought about the photo, uh, the, my actual profession and I knew that like, uh, in Vietnam, uh, we first, we just had our first, uh, university offering, uh, actual science program. So I know that actual profession is relatively new. Uh, in Vietnam, and I wanted to just uh, talk about my profession and explaining and explain it in Vietnamese because there's no such video like that on YouTube. Anyways, back to the story is that uh, I actually started filming and I published it uh, on YouTube channel, and that's how I started because like again, I'm I'm the type like I'm I'm a doer, like it's just a thought. I just feel like I have an idea. I feel like I'm old enough to start sharing uh, with people. I see that like the the young people now has a lot have a lot of choices in their career, especially for those who love math, for data, technology. You have so many choices uh, in your career. Uh, so yeah, so I. I wanted to like really share uh, my experiences, especially like I I have so so much study too. Like I have all the actual uh, uh, credential. I have the MBA, I have the CFA. I'm doing my master in computer uh, in IT. So I just want to share, and also I know I have a, a great network, knowing a lot of other people. Also love to share inside advices to help like the younger generations to choose their right career and stuff, uh, and also like. Um, uh, choose the right career, finding the job that they like, and are like growing, um, more, uh, growing their professional journey. Um, so, so yeah, I just, uh, so that's how I started my YouTube channel. I would say that, uh, it's also for me to like, uh, feel like I have another project to go, right? Something new, uh, to, to, to do and stuff. So it wasn't so much about money, but I would say it has never been really about money for me in, in everything I do. Yes, yes, the money is always there, but I, I do believe that I'm already financial independent. Like I already know that I will be able to make money through my main job or would be some stuff. So all of these uh, different ways of thing is just like really for me to uh, try out different things. So I, I, I consider myself like, uh, like to experience different things. So as long as like, it's just like, if, if just one of my husband have the slightest ideas of certain things, uh, or I have a certain idea of certain things, like I, I want to execute that right way. I don't want to sit there and think about it. Uh, if I, if I can do it and I feel like it makes sense, I start with it. So yeah, so that's how I started with the YouTube channel and then I continue to see it came, is this very helpful with other people. But of course, uh, what I want to say is that starting a YouTube channel is a lot of work as well because you you want to you need to be able to do scripting you need to do researching you need to do like filming editing like to be honest like a video at the beginning it took me like maybe close to 20 hours from beginning to end from like doing the research writing recording filming editing public uh, like publicizing it and stuff and I carry that mentality of like my photography business is like you you want to be able to reach uh, the most, uh, the most potential target market, right? Because at the end of the day, like if you do something and it's only helpful when it can reach as many people as it can, because otherwise, um, I have always been volunteering 
Uh, and I volunteer with the actual organization. I volunteer with like different uh, um, uh, organization in the community. So, so if this take up a lot of my time and the the uh, reward is not there, it's not helping a lot of people, or that like it affect my uh, my personal time with my family, which is my priority, then maybe this is not the best thing for me. Maybe I can okay, I should just do with my volunteer uh, activities and stuff. So. At the beginning, I would say like it, it did take a lot of time and then like, but I eventually I get to build out more like a system to help like when I should do it and stuff. And I would say that like, uh, um, overall, you, if you start this also, you need to know why you want to do it. Like you want to see the benefit of it because if you think that starting this to make money, it, it's not easy like that. It, it doesn't work that way. Like if we're talking about the the actual money that I have for this, so I was able to start monetizing so, uh, after like uh, getting one thousand subscribers and having uh four uh four thousand of uh, hours of watching. So I started to actually can monetize it in uh, August of uh, 2021. So um oh actually not August. Uh, it was way earlier. <laughs> But then, so it's like uh, in total, like uh, I started in uh, in May. That is when I first uh, monetizing it, and so it started for May was like about half of the month. So it was fifteen dollar and seventeen cent, and then it's going to June is about thirty two dollars and fifty seven cent. So say that my monthly like uh, revenue was around between like thirty to forty uh, ish dollars, and and you can see that like overall. So by now. Um, to what happened with January, um, we close to the end of January. So my estimated revenue for the entire since May last year to January now is like three hundred and fourteen dollar and seventy eight cent. So, but then let's say if we actually look at the expenses, my expenses was is nine hundred and ninety five dollar. So you ask, you want to ask what it is, right? For me, like, uh, some, some videos actually hire a special editor at first, you know, to bring more cinematic videos because it's more like also for my personal videos, like, uh, the, the day in the life of an actuary, which is my top video with 11,000, uh, view. So that one, I didn't really know how to edit it that way. So. So I hired an edit, uh, an editor to, to, uh, edit that video and a few more, uh, cinematic, uh, videos. So, uh, so I pay someone for that. I also pay someone for, like, when they actually, uh, doing, uh, translate from uh, English to Vietnamese because I wanted to serve the Vietnamese community. So I actually pay someone, uh, to do all of these, uh, transcribing, translating, group reading and everything. Uh, but then I started my uh, second YouTube channel, uh, just to speak in Vietnamese and producing Vietnamese content. So I stopped, I stopped doing it, but overall, uh, it was like, uh, $995 expenses that I spent for, for a year. And this is not taking into account of like, uh, the video equipment on editing software and stuff because I already have it from my photography business. But then if you, you starting it from new and you don't have any equipments, then you do need uh, a lot more to like, uh, to uh, in in dollar amount in order to like purchase these equipment or editing software uh and, and as well as like spending time to learn uh how to produce a video how to edit video and everything okay aim for my uh, youtube channel i would say my personal rating for it will be four star again it's because uh, uh i love making content but then um the administration behind the scene for uh, editing and then like uh, um, captions and or like uh, promotions and stuff is like uh, still administrative work, so it's still tedious. So so yeah, so maybe once it sees uh, if it's ever turned out to be a successful channel with lots of growth and that I can just focus. Uh, on producing content only, I can pump it into five star. But yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's still a great journey, uh, so far that, uh, I have, uh, with, on uh, the YouTube and, uh, be able to like producing, uh, videos that, uh, um, that are helpful with, uh, many people. Uh, I find it, uh, very satisfied, uh, satisfied. First is that, Nothing is uh, easy in life. 
when you do something. There's no quick and easy way to make money. You either have to put out investment, but if you don't have it, then you have to put out your time and your effort in learning, researching and, and stuff. So there's no such things as a free lunch. That's really economic one-on-one lesson for everyone. And I remember that uh, from my university course and I truly believe that is true for um, if not all would be like 99% of the situation and my second tip or lesson is just start like just take actions uh, execute it if you have an idea and if you can't just, just start taking actions it's like just the first step is always uh, the like one of the biggest uh, hurdle that you want to overcome is just Take that action, like execute is better than nothing. You don't need to have a perfect plan because everything, uh, what, what I learned is that like you just need to improve one thing at a time. And then from one thing, you can start from to another thing and another thing and another thing. But if you do not start anything, you, you have nothing, uh, to learn on. You cannot see the real results so that you can change and continue to improve further. So if you want to try doing something, just try today. And the other one is that like uh, in running a business, uh, the difficult thing is with uh, selling and marketing. If, even doesn't matter how good you are and stuff, but if you cannot convince people, you cannot let people know how good you are or like uh, make them believe that, hey, I'm really good and go with me and stuff or all that if they don't know about you, how they gonna go with your product or service or anything. And last but not least is that uh, I hope uh, you will be able to learn a lot from uh, the whatever the different things you, you want to do or want to test out. Like, yes, it's maybe a fail in terms of uh, financial means, but uh, it can give you a lot of int- intrinsic value. And uh, just like me, I I was able to develop uh, my soft skill, my communication skills. Uh, like I were able to um, have, a, in a way, a colorful life uh, just because I try out different things and uh, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it gives my life uh, um, it add in like many fun and oh well sometimes it's not all the fun things but many twists and turn and it makes your life is more dynamic and everything so uh, I would say the experiences that it can give can be tremendous and you never know how useful it may be in the future when you actually uh, do something else and and yeah like at the day know your self-worth is also another big thing. It's like whatever you do, do know your self worth, right? I, I was able to experience a lot because I, I, I experiment out of this and then have um have the mean to do it because I am in a fortunate position of having a rewarding career that can give me that uh financial freedom that I can try and take chance. Uh, with different business, with different ideas and everything. Um, and the, and for sure, like when you do something, you want to make sure that you charge what you think it, it is worth. Only then other people respect you. It's only when you respect yourself as well. So of course, there's a passion project you're not charging and that's fine. But then if you actually start charging people and actually thinking of a business, you want to be able to, um, to actually establish something uh, that can be profitable and it is really like your self-worth. I hope you find today's video helpful and uh, give you some food for thought uh, and know the real reality of actually building multiple streams of income or having a business or a side hustle and stuff. But hey, 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 if there's an idea and if you can execute it, if you're in a fortunate situation of be able to execute it, just start today. Do not delay. Uh, anything you want to hear from me or any topic, uh, Feel free to let me know in the comment sections. Uh, thank you again for watching and for supporting uh, me so far. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you in another video where I will be talking about, uh, I guess, my success version of uh, order uh, stream of income. Not quite on success, but yeah, this is uh, better in, in the order. Maybe it's related to more to investment and everything. Again, thank you everyone so much and I will see you in another video. Bye now.